Um, we'll start with a roll call. Roll call, Taylor Reese. Here. Bobby Erdman. Here. Victoria Hill. Here. Here. Daniel Radley. Here. Ashley. Here. And Beth Kirsten. Here. Great. Um, we do have a registration card for a general public comment. Would you like to wait for the discussion on the Aquatic Center to speak on that, Joshua? Okay. Um, has everyone had an opportunity to look at the minutes um, from last week? Are you on the minutes? Are you on the minutes? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, there are a number of corrections that need to be made on the minutes. Okay. First of all, it's not an agenda, it's the minutes. Um, because this is a learning curve for our new secretary, is the reason I'm doing this. Um, if a roll call is taken, then the members, the staff, and any visitors must be listed on your minutes. Um, if you have a motion, it should say motion made by, and then the person, and you don't use the first name, you use the full name or the last name, not just the first name, because five years from now, who's gonna know who Bruce is? Who's gonna know who Daniel is? They have to have the names. Um, what was the other? I think those were the only things that I wanted to point out to you. We can get those fixed. So therefore, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes um, as corrected. I'll second that motion as corrected. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, regarding the park and recreation expenditure report, is there any questions regarding the expenditure accounts at this time? If there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. I'll make a motion to approve the expenditure report. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On to Park and Rec revenue account. Not a lot yet received, although we have got some ball usage fees in. Yay. Saw the kids out there playing, looking great. Um, any other comments or questions on the revenues? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the revenue report as presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That moves us quickly on to item six, All Saints Church to have a petting zoo at the All Saints Church picnic on June 24th. The recommendation is to approve the request. And Ms. Rebecca speaking. Yes, so um, I did not have in the past when we approved it for the ABC group, the uh, waiver or the liability. So I included those on the um, in the packet for you guys to look at. Same, um, same company, same everything. I do have Megan here um, with sleeping baby and uh, she'll uh, be able to answer any specific questions about the festivity. Hi, Megan. Hi. Where is this? Oh, I'm sorry, it says it right here, North Shelter yeah. 1. The date is incorrect. Okay. It's Sunday the 25th is the parish picnic. Okay, 25th. Sunday, June 25th. So no Saturday. Correct. Drager, D-R-A-E-G-E-R. The quick clarification, when you have date of use, the, the both days listed there, you're, you're going to need the park for both days, but the petting zoo is only one day, or? Yeah, the petting zoo is just Sunday, so okay. we, we do all the setup Saturday, so all those picnic tables and tents and all of that stuff, but the petting zoo and animals will just be there Sunday for the picnic. Great. So when we're approving this motion, please note the change. 
whoever makes that motion. Do we have any questions for Megan? We've already heard from Emma, so. <laughs> If there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the wedding due at the All Saints Church picnic on June 25th. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Have fun. Thank you. All right, item seven, campground policy. The recommendation is to listen to the presentation and act accordingly. I'm just going to tag in, but keep in mind, I am representing a variety of departments here within the city, okay? This is an ongoing issue that we experienced last year. We have a variety of individuals that are abusing the campground policies that we have, and we didn't really have teeth that we needed in the policy. So that is what we are suggesting and putting in the campground policy going forward, is we would like the ability, if we end up actually... I'm going to say evict, even though I know the chief doesn't like it, evicting them from the campgrounds due to them breaking policy, we want the ability to keep them out for the remainder of this season because they wait their two days and then they come back. And then we deal with it again two weeks later. At this point, it's becoming a real hassle for staff. We're spending way more time on it than we should be. So this gives us the ability to, if we are removing them from the campground, saying you can't come back for the remainder of this season. Oh. Madam Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I have a couple question statements. Um, considering that this group changed the policy for the campground for that um, nurse that's going to be staying, you have um, item maximum stay is 14 days, um, and then res underlined no residential stays. I would suggest that we put in there without uh, prior approval, because now you've you've started a. Uh, I mean, it, trend. There's, there's a sub, It's been, you know. Anyway, so I would just suggest that so that you don't have anybody questioning after a while. The uh, nurse actually ended up not taking the opportunity to stay in the campground, so we've only had one individual that's ended up actually staying past the 14 day. Well, actually, she stayed over um, into October into the end of October. I'm a little hesitant, Bobby, because I don't necessarily want to encourage that. I don't want people to think that they can apply to then change the policy. So it's completely up to you guys. If you feel that that's something you want added into it, I see the, the definite um, possibility of putting it in, but I would kind of caution against it right now just because we don't want to encourage it because that's what people are doing is they're asking for approval to stay longer and they're short of really, really strict reasons why we're allowing it, we don't, I don't necessarily want them to think that it's an option. It just causes so much hassle for the staff. Otherwise, when they see other people staying for long and then they themselves aren't getting approved. But if you do ap uh, approve it for specific or special cases, you're opening a can of worms again. Um, if you have this statement in there, then people can't argue. If you have done it before in the past, they have a right to ask for it currently. So either we don't do it at all, ever again, or we say that they have to have prior approval. That's my opinion. Um, also, when you're typing it up, the one down on a wood available $4, I'm just being picky and being a proofreader. <laughs> Uh, you have prohibits any fire word from being brought into, underlined, but you didn't finish the sentence, underlined. I'll make sure they adjust that. <laughs> um, are you comfortable with revamping this every time the price changes, or would you just want to say wood is available from the campgrounds? I thought we actually restricted it to six pieces and not eight. I could be wrong. That's what I'm saying, like you're going to make changes... We did change it from handful because people were then taking truckloads of handfuls. And so we restricted it to a specific number because of that. Okay. So that's part of the reason why it got changed. Okay. Um, the other thing that I would mention is that 
you you talked about um, adding that last item, the right to evict, the teeth to it. Yes. But what you don't have in there, which sounds like you want, is to say for the remainder of the season. Do you want to put that in there? It is on there. On the it is on the next page. What what we included oh, in the I'm packet was the old the one. Current one. The old one. <laughs> and the next page is our suggestion, which says for the remainder of the current campground sorry, season. Sorry, I guess I, I just thought I had two alike. copies. <laughs> All right. The okay. Great minds think alike. Yeah. Got it in there. Um, yeah, I'm. I think I'm struggling with Bobby on that. No residential stays because I think. If you put it no residential stays, but we make exceptions, then someone's going to go, your very policy says no residential stays. But if you put with some kind of board approval. Um, That's already in the city ordinance. Yeah. That you guys can supersede policies. Okay. You're the only authority that actually can. You okay. have the ability to go back and say, we're going to make an exception to the current policies. Okay. So that's, I just... I really feel like it should be very limited, very rare occurrences. I, I really don't want it to come back every year. So that's why I'm kind of I'm a little hesitant. But I completely understand Bobby's point of we have done it twice in the past now, so we could put with prior approval. I just I feel like staff is then going to be indenuated with a ton of requests from the individuals that we are currently trying to remove from the campground because they're sure. abusing policies. What was the circumstances for the other person, not the nurse? The first circumstance was an individual that was building a house in the community, and the contractor was on kind of a tight schedule and didn't think they would get done by the time the season ended, which is October 15th. So Parks and Recreation Commission approved extending their stay until October 31st of that year. Okay. Do we have a ballpark of how many individuals are abusing this? Three at the moment that we've already had to interact with the PD on. Jiminy. This season? Yes. Okay. What do you mean? They just were staying the past third time. And last year, because it took a while to get everything processed, we weren't getting letters to them immediately at the end of the two weeks. So they assumed they had some flexibility this year um, where they could say, oh, staff will take a while to get it together. We've got a little bit of time. Then we'll leave for our 48 hours. Then we'll come back for another three weeks and we'll just keep pushing it. So that's the reason why we're here today. We do expect them to push it this year. And that's why we want the right to, nope, you're out. You break the rules, you're out for the rest of the season. They kind of make it like a whole summer long event. <laughs> yes. My goodness. <laughs> Yes. Have they been billed for that extra days? Previously, we didn't require them to pay ahead of time. Now we do. Okay. We do let them know that if we don't have an envelope with their vehicle's information on it, the next day we are reaching out to them and saying payment is needed now. Okay. If they, if they do roll over that, are we going to find them at all? It's very difficult. Okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't know. Just I feel like that would be a real enforcer and be like, you know, like if you happen to not be out of a hotel room by five o'clock, you get hit with another day. Yes. You know, that sort of. It's difficult because we don't accept card payments for these. So it's just cash or checks. Ah. So we have no way of actually saying you stayed an extra day. We're going to charge your card for an extra day. We don't have that ability at this time. There have been individuals that have gone over and we've kind of worked out payment plans for them after they've left. But a lot of times they live very transient lifestyles, so they don't necessarily have another place that they're moving to or a set address that they're moving to, so it becomes really difficult to track them down. Oh, sure, sending an invoice later or something. Got Where it. do you send an invoice to if they don't have an address? Well. Is there a signed contract they have to do? Is that something we should consider? That's the campground policies. When they choose to camp at our campground, they choose to abide by our policies. No. So if they don't, we get the right to kick them out. Right. Just wondering if something that they have to sign and return protects a little bit more because, you know, they could just say, well, we never looked at this. We don't know the rules. So They're posted at the campgrounds. It, it's not our right to force them to read, and it would create a lot of staff time if right. we had to track everybody down and get signatures from everybody that uses the campground. Plus, a lot of people sometimes just pop in for the weekends, and staff aren't here on weekends. So we'd have no way of tracking that. Oh. Another question. Who, re who enforces this rule? 
Will it be our police department? It's a conjunction of Becca and Andrew in the Parks Department and the Police Department. Okay. We're working together, which is why the chief is here showing it's a collaboration between departments. I have a question about the dump station. Now that is the honor system? Yes. For people to pay? All right. So I know every time I've camped there, I always see a couple campers come in. They stay there a while and they leave. Now, whether they paid or not, I have no idea, but... We do have cameras now down at the campground. Most of them are focused on the structures, though. Sure. We don't necessarily want people to feel like they're being watched while they're enjoying the campgrounds or the playgrounds or those sorts of things. But in the restroom area and definitely in the parks office, there are cameras now to watch that. The dump station is a little too far out. We sure. can maybe catch vehicles coming and going, but we definitely wouldn't be able to tell if they're paying or not. All right. I just assume they weren't because they, you know. But the dump station does pretty decent. It, it brings in a good chunk. Okay. It's also free for overnight campers. Right, right. So it's others that are coming through. But I always see somebody coming in, oh, we got no more, more campers coming in, and then 10 minutes later they're, they're leaving, so. Yeah. Madam Chairman, um, unfortunately we have to put this kind of sentence in our rules now, and I'm glad that we're doing it early so that it doesn't get get away from us, and then we try to to, to catch up. Um, I think this is a smart move as far as I'm concerned, and perhaps it'll wake some people up that just because you think it's funny, it's not funny. I agree. And um, it's causing our regular customers, our regular residents to, to be um, disadvantaged because something is broken that they would like to play with or use and or something is dirty when they would like to come in with their family. So I, th I think this is a great uh, sentence to stick in our rules. Thanks, Bobby. Are the disturbing campers there now still? Okay. Okay. So if we approve this tonight, are we allowing them to come back on Monday? That's entirely up to you guys. You have the right to set the campground policies and that does not have to go to council. So as soon as you approve it, it's effective. And if they haven't already returned to the campground, we could then say there was a recent policy change and you're not allowed to come back for this season. But the individuals that have already returned, I don't think we have the right to actually enforce it against them at this time. Because when they arrived at the campground, it was the old policies, so. We actually towed people this year. Yep. Okay, wow. Um, yeah, sounds like it. Well, it is June 7th, and I, I would... Hmm? It's very early in the season. It is, and, and what I would like to do is give discretion to staff as far as the timing um, as soon as possible on implementation, but not falling into the gray area of you're already here, um, so possibly posting it for any new campers coming in you know, for those people to see. Um, July 1st sounds certainly acceptable, but if you could squeeze it in a week earlier, even better. We'll do that. We'll actually post it at the campground and we'll put a nice brightly colored poster that says new campground policies effective this day so that people know. We can do that. Do you need approval on this uh, verbiage? We do. We need a motion to approve the campground policy change. Is there any other discussion on the policy? Um, if there's a disturbance with the campers that are there right now with this policy change, does this apply to them? Say we had to call chief tomorrow or when they come back a second time? I'm, what I'm thinking is that we can implement it basically as soon as Katerina, our Parks and Recreation Assistant, can get it posted on the board, we'll say it's effective. So the people that are currently in the campgrounds and using it, we won't be able to use it unless they leave and come back. Okay. So at the bare minimum, it would take two weeks based off of whoever might have come today, they've got two weeks before we could fully implement it at every campsite. Sure. Yeah, I would say once they're ousted, then policy is in effect for any returns. Yep. I will make a motion to uh, accept the campground policy as presented and make it effective as soon as the vote is taken. Thank you, Bobby. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?
The motion carries. Thank you. Item eight regards the park ordinance, listening to the presentation and acting accordingly. This one is very similar off of the campground issue. We're having a lot of issues within our parks as well. Um, we have had some instances where police officers have reached out to youth that have been caught doing activities in the parks that are banned or prohibited activities. And we would like to ban them from the parks for certain periods of time, depending on how severe their um, transaction is. We don't have that in the code currently that allows us to do that. Not to say that we probably have done it in the past, but we don't actually have the teeth to do it. This gives us the teeth and the ordinance to be able to do that then. What page is that on? Um, it should be under Article 2 Park Regulations. I believe Becca put the all the park regulations in, and then the very last page has our suggested change. No, I okay. printed black and white, so of course I don't have your pretty highlights. The very last page, it. Um, it should be right under Section 50-72 Regulations. That's There's a little sentence. sentence that says violations of any park regulations may result in sanctions, criminal citations, all of the above. Now, how is that enforced? It says police department. I, I understand that, but how are they going to know if they're down there or not? We have an actual Excel. Oh, you, do you mean like if they come like back the to the park? Yeah. It's really if we were to catch them there again, okay. we have an Excel spreadsheet that keeps track of the kids okay. or individuals. I guess I shouldn't assume that they're children, but let's be honest, they're usually youth. Now, if they were caught in the park again, are we talking tickets? Are we talking community service? We don't usually do community service. We do citations. Okay. If there's like a, a very extensive regulation that they break that's really up to the police department what they want to do with it but that's why we kind of left it open in terms of it could be criminal charges it could be citations or it could be a ban but in this case this gives us the ability to pick and choose depending on the severity of what they do okay. I would like to see the regulation include graffiti where can you show me where it kind of references that? Because I just read it. Like the bill posting, no person shall pose, pay, pass, and pay. Or attach any placard, bill, notice, or sign. It doesn't say yeah. paint, tag. I honestly don't know if we have anything specific. Chief, do you know if there's anything in the ordinances that relates specifically to graffiti? What is she question? She's not listening to me. <clears throat> but right here it says about paint. Painting. I, I'm just wandering graffiti around looking at Graffiti might follow so much under a state citation. Uh -huh. This is just the city code. Um, so if there was a criminal charge that would go through the circuit court from a state statute, mm -hmm. that would be something separate, which I would assume graffiti would be under. Graffiti, no. we don't I would to just really like to see graffiti there. added in there. Um, that's something that as I wander around the parks, because I walk pretty much daily through the parks, and seeing graffiti... Um, what we could do is adjust number three with the bill posting and yeah. just say bill posting and graffiti and then kind of adjust those sentences to include any graffiti on any structured tree or natural object in the parks. I would like to see that, yeah. Okay, we can do that. As a, as a reason to exclude somebody from the parks. Yep. It would be a criminal charge if they did graffiti. Three hundred and thirteen bucks if they get caught with graffiti. That's appropriate. I also think that they should be banned from the parks. That's why I'm saying I want to add Let's it, throw it in, in there. there. Yep. Sign or advertising matter or graffiti. Yeah. So what I'm reading then is under bill posting, mm -hmm. we would put bill posting slash graffiti. No person shall post, paste, fasten, paint, or attach any placard, bill, notice, sign, or advertising material, or graffiti upon any structure, tree, or any natural object in the city park. Yes, please. Except otherwise authorized by staff. Yep. We can absolutely add that. Again, we need this, unfortunately, because people have no longer re respecting um, personal prop or property that doesn't belong to them. So therefore, I would like to make a motion to approve the park ordinance as um, amended. 
as presented and amended. Excuse me. Do I have a second? I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. So because that's an ordinance, that'll have to go to council, but we can get it passed before council next week, hopefully. But thank you guys. I appreciate it. Present it to council? And I know. Sorry, what? Should we make a motion to present it to council? I kind of figured oh, it was in there. So Okay, I make a motion to present to uh, to recommend, recommend to, to common council to approve the park ordinance as presented and amended. I thank you, Bobby. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yes. Hopefully we won't be back with an update. <laughs> Except for good news. Good news. Okay. So the um, final item is save the pool. We're going to listen to presentations and act accordingly. Um, we did form a subcommittee, but I would love to give Joshua an opportunity to give his thoughts on that before we um, report on what the subcommittee has done so far. Hello, Council. Thank you for letting me talk today. Um, just kind of came in off the hot topic, off the social media from the town. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Josh. Could you problem. just uh, say your name and your address? and then Joshua Madrigrano, uh, W853 Klondike Road. Thank you, sir. Not a problem. Go ahead. Um, just saw that we had formed a committee for saving the pool. Um, I know it has not been economically feasible to run the pool for quite some time now, and I understand that wasn't the goal 30 years ago when this pool was built, but I think with times changing, I don't think this should fall on the residents anymore to suck up this bill. Um, there are a lot of great ideas that this committee could come up with, I'm sure, um, that either being multiple fundraiser events, what have you. Um, it's just my opinion that if we can't come up with a great manager for this pool, and I've seen that there was an opening um, for the city for the manager of the Berlin Aquatic Center, um, if they can't come up with a good plan by this year and implement it and make this pool economically feasible, again, um, I would just suggest raising it to the ground and putting a splash pad or something more, you know, affordable for the city and for kids to enjoy. Um, too long have I taken my daughter there now, getting cuts on her feet, cuts on her knees, not wanting to go there because of its dilapidated, just unreasonable. I don't think our residents should be able to swim in that. Um, so yeah, that's just my two cents. I would have a more formal put together thing here. I came last minute from work. I saw that this meeting was happening. So I'm gonna be coming to a lot more and hoping that this council and the subcommittee can either come up with something this year. Um, if it's able for the public to join, I'd love to you know, put my hat in the ring. So absolutely. Um if your interest is in saving the pool, it sounds like you have an interest. I want I want to save the pool. Mm -hmm. I've I came here in 1990 with my family, and I've been swimming in that pool a long time. Yeah. Um, I would love to see it work, but I would also like funds to come into the city and not have it be an expenditure for the city. Our next subcommittee meeting Wednesday. is Wednesday the 14th at 5 p.m. in the library. And we okay. usually meet for half an hour to 45 minutes. And we're, we're gonna go over what we discussed at the last two. Okay. Um, and so you're welcome to stay for that and yeah. just kind of hear our report that we've found so far and the work that we're doing. And um, I, we still are looking for our three um, community members, um, the manager of the pool, the new manager of the pool. Who they did hire one. Yes, sir. Because I did see the application fill out, so they did hire one. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, so that manager is interested in becoming a part of that effort, and she's got a lot of great ideas she wants to bring to the next one, so that would be a perfect opportunity for you to come hear her thoughts as well. So she will probably make herself uh, one of the three community members that we're looking for. Beautiful. Um, but it's open at this point. If you show up and you express a desire, you know, we'll bring you on board. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Sorry to just vent. It's just a hot topic with me and the family because for years and years and years, we've loved to use that pool. But yeah, lately it's become 
pretty bad. So we don't want to use the pool. We want to want to use the pool. So thank you for your time, Council. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you Josh. Thank you. Um, I have no other cards, but did anybody else wish to speak on the topic? If not, um, uh, do you want to start, Ashley? We actually have... I'm sorry, <laughs> Kayla. I looked at her and said okay. you. Um, <laughs> she's like, I'm not in this. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right now, the members of the subcommittee are Kayla Reeves, Bruce Tetsky, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's because his name on Facebook is different. It throws me every time. Okay. And um, myself, Victoria Hill. And we have met two times so far. And most of this has been brainstorming, um, just coming up with ideas, assigning tasks, and throwing ideas and efforts out there. So I'll start with Kayla. You can um, talk a little bit about where, what your assignment tasks were and what you've found so far. And for the secretary, so that you don't have to write all this down, I think it would be a good idea for us to just compile it and send it to you as a, this is what we've done so far. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, let's see. I have so many notes all over the place. Um, like Victoria said, we've been meeting, we met twice. Um, we started a Facebook page, which has generated a lot of attention. Um, and it basically breaks it down, you know, what it's gonna cost to put a band-aid on this, what it's gonna cost to totally revamp it. Um, let me see here. We started looking at grants. Uh, did you find a thermometer? No, I do, however, have some ideas for how to create one, um, but my efforts so far to reach out and find a thermometer have proved fruitless. Okay. <laughs> um, we talked about getting private grants with incentive, um, like a brick, uh, you know, with your name, as in, what is it, sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. Um, let's see. We, I reached out to Alex Stallman, our state representative. I have not heard back. I have not heard back from Joan Balwig, but I know uh, Bruce had some luck reaching out to his uh, representatives. Um, I have a whole list of grants. If oh, where did Sarah go? <laughs> if we could look at those, and she, okay, perfect. Um, there's one, two three, four, eight of them that I found. So you can look into that. Are we a member of Wisconsin? Um, Parks and Rec Association. Parks and Rec Association. We are? OK. Because they have their magazine that we can publish a little stint in about our pool and its needs. So I think that might be something worth looking into. Um, they also have networking opportunities and grants that we can look into through them. Uh, the Wisconsin League of Municipalities, I touched base with them today. She will get back to me to see if there's any funding available. Um, that's really all I have right here. Oh, I came up with Wisconsin or Walmart. Walmart has community economic grants that we can look into. Um, yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> Great. That's a lot of good work and digging. So we can start um, looking in and having staff help us look into those. I know um, there is some expertise with um, our city administrator on grant writing, so she might be able to help us with that if we can get some basics filled in. Um, but we want to just kind of flood the, the airwaves, basically, with grant opportunities and ways to try to bring some scholarship fund in for that. And Bruce? Yeah, I reached out to Ron Johnson and... Um, Can you speak into the mic, please? Um, I emailed Ron Johnson and the other state senator. Um, Bowling? No, I reached out. The state senator. Um, um, Tam Tammy, Tammy Baldwin. Tammy Baldwin, yeah. Uh, I've got emails back from them. They just gave me some, some places to look for possible grants and loans. I've been looking through some of that, and there, there's a lot to digest there. Yeah, those emails were very, very full of um, places to go look. So what we'll probably end up doing, I think, in some of our subcommittee meetings is maybe taking one or two at a time, um, looking into it, deciding if it'll work, figuring out how to apply for it. 
because it's got a lot of um, op opportunities there from those emails. Was that all you had? Yeah. Okay, so I assigned a few things to myself. Um, let's see, I um, acquired the slideshow from staff and broke that down into individual frames and then got that posted as kind of like a story video on Facebook. So those people who go out to that Facebook page can see um, all of that um, slideshow as far as the money's needed. Um, we are go we've set some initial goals, 250,000 for the pump room, 500,000 for a second goal, and then 2 million for the full. So we have some goals set um, I did inquire with staff, and they said that we wouldn't be able to set up a separate bank account. The funds would have to go to the city um, earmarked for the pool. So we will have to make sure somehow in our communications that as people donate that we're telling them to make sure they earmark these funds. Um, I was in speaking with Allie Borland, the pool manager, um, she said that she had a lot of ideas, including possibly uh, save the pool party and different things like that. I did tell her that we were working on zero budget. Um, we have no funds as far to spend to set things up, so um, we do have to work around that consideration. Um, we reached out to Katrina and Anna Mae, who run the... Um, Kiwanis. Kiwanis. Or the farmer's market. The farmer's, yeah, yeah. They Sorry, yeah. I was like, what word are you saying? <laughs> yeah, the, the um, artist and farmer's market, and they're going to assist us with um, finding some ways to advertise for that, so we might set up a spot on a booth or a booth or something along that lines. Um, what are... We, oh, you forgot to mention that you created a flyer. Oh, yep, I did create a flyer. It's posted right now on... Facebook and I will be printing them tomorrow to hang up at local businesses um, just to get the word out get information out so and then the final piece which Kay uh, Kayla <laughs> I was trying to make sure I didn't say Ashley <laughs> the final piece with Kate which Kayla mentioned is that we are I'm trying to locate a thermometer like I know I've seen thermometers um, up on 49 um, where people post like United Way and different um, activities like that. Um, in lieu of finding one that somebody already has, then we'll probably just create one. Um, but I would just love it to be an in-your-face community um, obvious thing that they can see that there's this effort going on and people can say, what's this pool fund for? And then they can start doing some research and uh, get on the bandwagon if they so wish. There's been a ton of reach out, a ton of reach out. Um, I know I've entertained a lot of people who just um, want to be a part of the effort, who were previous lifeguards, who were previous instructors, like uh, swim instructors, different and various things who are just keenly interested in uh, volunteering in any way to help out. So we will definitely utilize the community resources as they reach out to us. Um, we're keeping their names. We're saying, okay, thanks. We're going to reach out to you um, when and if something happens or comes up. But right now, we're really just in the throw the ideas out on the splash board phase of this and trying to figure out how to move forward in an organized way. So um, we're just kind of in the I idea phase. And honestly, I don't see us because of the late start, because we're starting now in summer, um, we probably won't have the funds raised um, this year. Um, at best, I'd like to see the immediate repair funds, the first 250, like for the pump room, um, the other electrical repairs, like I'd like to see those go in um, this year, but we may need to go through a whole year to get to our stated goal of 2 million. So I, I envision this personally as being a year to two year project, not an overnight thing. But um, the faster we can get requests out, the faster we can get activities and, and um, awareness going, which we've got a really great head start on, I think that we will um, see some momentum here going forward in the next couple of weeks. So that's our report on the subcommittee. And of course, we'll pull all this together for you, sir. Can I uh, can I talk about a couple of things that I've done on my own separate from the committee? 
for the save the pool for, effort for the save the pool effort. sure um so i did approach the car club uh here in town about setting up a booth to hold during the car show event uh we bring in a lot of people from outside the community a lot of people from outside the community and a lot of wealthy people from outside the community and um I was I, I approached them, asked them if I could get approval to set up a booth, and they said, "Yeah, totally, a okay." Um, and I'm going to I'm going to set up a booth and raise awareness because I think one of the things is you know we had that referendum, and it barely failed. I mean, it was a razor's edge. You know, it it was about to pass, and I think that that's part of the reason is is people didn't it, it wasn't explained well enough like how bad certain things were and it's if you don't know what the money's actually going to go to or like you know you can say oh the pool's bad well is it really bad and then you can show someone a photo of the, how bad it is and you're like oh okay you know there's a difference between being told and seeing and so I was going to put a booth up that showed, showed just the condition of the pool so people understood the severity of you know that problem we're facing um, because I, I know another referendum was talked about, you know, being entertained at some point. And I know that we should, if the opportunity arises to get donations like the brick, like you, like you said, um, or a board that has plaques with people's names on it, you know, something like that, that would be, that would be nice. Um, but a referendum is still on the table potential, you know, in the future. And I think that because if it did pass, we would have had the money. And because it was a razor's edge, I think people weren't aware of just the condition of everything. And I don't think that, you know, I think we, looking outward is nice, but I, I want to raise awareness that way. Um, so I did get approval there. I talked to the ABC group. Um, they wanted me to come down to one of their meetings about putting up a thing there for the 4th of July event, um, setting up a booth, putting out flyers, just making people aware of what's all going on because I think part of the reason we are facing I, I just don't think the community is understanding like what we're doing here because not everybody watches it or whatever I mean you didn't know that we had hired a new or, or filled that that position you know and then you felt much more relieved once you found out I, I feel like that would help people to learn more of what we're doing make it you know more president uh, presented to the public you know, I feel like that would help. So that, that's what I've done. Um, and we we did talk at the uh, Tourism Commission uh, because Farmer's Market does bring in a lot of people about, I had also talked to them about putting flyers up and stuff too. And so I, I was also working on that. I knew you guys were doing your own thing, but you could only have three on the committee. So mm -hmm. that's what I've done sort of on my own. Thank you. I to report that. With that... Uh, that would be the ABC Group's um, park event. It's actually July 3rd. Oh, it's the 3rd? <laughs> yep, oh. it's I'm the 3rd. I said I'm ABC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, one of the ladies, I'm trying to blank on her name from Fortify Bank. Uh, I think that's who it was. I don't know. She came into the store, and I'm like, I see you all the time, and I don't remember your name. Uh, <laughs> so bad with names. Yes. Yep, and she told me to come in front of the board and, you know, and just present it because I do think raising awareness would help our cause greatly and relieve the concerns of people in town. Speaking of awareness, um, the website that we created on Facebook is called Save the Pool Berlin, Wisconsin. Um, I went on there and invited all of my friends list to it, and I think we saw, like, 244 ads this week alone. So if you guys um, are not yet a member of that page, please um, become a member of the page on this board. Feel free to invite you know everybody that you know in the community to like the page and follow it, and that will be a good way to spread that information. Is that a Facebook page or a website? It is a Facebook page. The Committee of the Whole asked last night for updates on the subcommittee, um, and we had no idea because we didn't meet yet. So when you guys compile them, when you do go send them to Zeb for the minutes, could you take me in as well so that I can uh, move them forward? Absolutely. Thank you. Would you like us to send you our minutes from the subcommittee meeting every time we meet? That way you do have something to present the community as a whole? 
That would be great. And if, if they asked, I, I have the ability to present to them, give them something, move them on to Sarah if needed. Because we are meeting every two weeks, so there's going to be at least one meeting before you have to see, see him again. Yeah, I think, that, I think that would be very helpful. Whether I do anything with him or not, we'll see. We'll see what the council wants from it, but then at least I have the opportunity. I'm sure there's keen interest in the community about what's going on on that and how we're moving forward. And honestly, it's a little daunting <laughs> to think of raising $2 million, but I'm sure we can do it as a whole community. Um, to go back to that um, idea that you had mentioned about possibly raising it, that has been in discussions. Um, I think if you look back on the um, May minutes, the May discussion, um, you'll hear about that. Yes, yes. And I think the well, what I was going to mention on that is the price tag is even larger to raise and construct than to fix. So that's something else to consider. It's not just a whew, start over kind of thing. Like there's still quite a price tag to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to ease your mind that we are considering all possibilities, um, but our first and foremost effort and hope is that we can save the pool and show the community a good faith effort in doing that. Okay, number nine. Excuse me, that completes number nine. Number 10 is new business. Do we have any new business to add to a future agenda that we need to um, bring to the staff? Not at this time. You want me to keep the pool on the agenda? I would like yes. that to stay okay. on the agenda. That's yes. what I figured. I just wanted to confirm. Yes, ma'am. Any old business to discuss? I was going to let you guys know that that camper, the long-term camper, has decided uh, or has actually had some management changes, so she's no longer coming in general, but that was discussed earlier. Otherwise, that's all I had. And that was the approval that we gave um, last month for her to stay longer? Correct. And she's, yeah, moved on. They, she, she stated that she had management changes and uh, was no longer approved to come. Oh. So long-term camper no longer required. Okay. Um, I do want to mention that the Berlin Youth, Base, Berlin Youth Baseball and Softball's shed at the batting cages is being delivered as we speak. So feel free to check it out. And thanks for getting all of that approved. Cool. Activity. It's already a bustling season. I just it's kind of fun to see kids out everywhere riding bikes, playing baseball. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, is there access to like a porta potty? Or who would be tasked to set that up? So let's just say I'm bringing kids on the back end of the dugout to use the restroom. And I just figure if there's like something there for the summer, I think it's like six weeks. Yeah, usually the, the porta potty um, got cut this year due to budget say, expenses. Yeah. We can certainly um, present that to the committee on, um, excuse me, the uh, Calman Council and ask them in the next budget to consider a bathroom or port. Because if the kids are just going to go in the yeah. on the ground because there's no porta potty, I don't know the wisdom of cutting that. Expense. Wasn't Varsity Softball going to put one down there and pay for it? Or was I am not sure. Okay. I'm not sure on that. I think it's gone though. That, oh, that they paid for one during the Varsity yeah. season. Right. So the restrooms are open. So. But they don't want to go all the way to the restroom. Is that what you're saying there? Well, even if we did have a porta potty, it was stationed on the far side of the of the field closer to the campground. Oh, it would it would have been closer to use the bathrooms. And you have to go through a dugout to use it. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Have the bathrooms been vandalized this year at all yet? Do you know? Yeah. My gosh. <sighs> Green Lake closed theirs, so mm -hmm. we're not Green Lake. True. Ours are still open. 
it's stunning. It's stunning how many people destroy property and don't realize that the city can't afford to constantly fix it. And... Okay, any other old business to bring up? In that case, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank goodness, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you know what this mm. Do you know I can this, do that. Do you know who the Sass family is? Yeah. Recording. Because they're the ones who, who have done. Yeah, I will reach out to them. Right. Um, we'll have to talk with Sarah. Yeah, we'll have to talk with Sarah.